Dragonite, Tyranitar, Salamence, Metagross, Garchomp, Blissey, Gyarados. All of these Pokemon are incredibly strong and have access to a great move pool. They're just some of the best Pokemon. Everybody knows it. Everybody uses them. But there are a lot of other Pokemon in the Pokemon series. And a lot of them are not used as much. They're strong. They can get you to, to and through the Elite Four and maybe even into some competitive play. But they're just kind of outclassed by these stronger Pokemon. They're what I would consider underrated. And they deserve a lot more recognition than they get. So in this video, I'm going to highlight 10 of those Pokemon and what I consider my top 10 underrated Pokemon. Now the first one is Golduck. Golduck is a first generation Pokemon. He's sort of a water pseudo-psychic type in that he has access to psychic type moves, but he doesn't, ex he doesn't actually have the typing, which is useful since they had Slowbro and, and Starmie anyway in the first generation. He's surprisingly solid, something I found out when I was playing through the fourth generation for the first time. He's actually a great late-term HM slave, and that his stats are pretty good, so he can actually fight off Pokemon, but he can learn moves like Surf and Waterfall, I believe Waterfall, and uh, Rock Climb and things like that, so uh, he's definitely useful. At number 9 is Star Raptor. Star Raptor is the Pidgeot of the fourth generation, the normal flying type you have access to early in the game. And when he becomes Star Raptor, he's actually a pretty good Pokemon. He's got great attack, he's got good speed, and he also, and his, uh, Ability also lowers the attack of the Pokemon that he fights. In addition to, the, to that, he has Close Combat, a very powerful fighting type move that can surprise a rock or a steel Pokemon and just decimate any normal types he might fight. Those attributes make him a uh, pretty good Pokemon that can almost take into competitive play. Number eight is Raichu. Now, I don't get the Raichu hate. I know that as a Pikachu, he has poor stats, and it takes a while to level him up all the way to get the good moves to make him a good Raichu. But once he evolves, he is a very fast Pokemon with access to some very strong moves. So he can pull off a Thunderbolt, a Thunder, or a Thunder Wave very quickly if you want something dead or paralyzed. He's not going to take a hit. But if you bring him through to Elite Four, he's a very quick draw, which is something you might need if you're going against Pokemon that are at higher levels than you. Number seven is Flygon, the, the dragon ground type from the third generation. Now Flygon is hard to get to, but he's more easily accessible than, say, uh, a Dragonite or a Tyranitar, and he might actually be able to use him against the Elite Four of that game. He can levitate, which is nice, since you don't have to worry about ground attacks, and he's just a pretty strong Pokemon. Since he's ground dragon, he's totally outclassed by Garchomp, but he does have access to things like Earthquake and Crunch and and dragon moves as well, making him a pretty solid Pokemon. I've used him against the Elite Four a couple times, and he's, he's pretty good. He's very fast, has good attack, and that just makes him a very strong Pokemon. Number six is Nidoking. Now, Nidoking is just versatile. I like Nidoking, maybe because he looks like the king, Elvis. I mean, maybe that's just what I named my Nidoking, but his versatility is good. He has access to the same type attack bonus on Earthquake, and he can just pull off some weird stuff. He's got, he can use Megahorn, which is, can surprise his slow psychic type, and he even has access to things like Thunder. I know I was fighting a, a friend of mine who had a Nino King with a defensive bird Pokemon, you can guess which one, and his Thunder totally surprised me and actually managed to take me out without me doing too much to him. Number five is Poliwrath. Now I like Poliwrath. When I was playing through Fire Red, I uh, picked one up and realized that he was very useful. He's one of those that's good at a bunch of different things, but not great at any one thing, so he's a little uh, overlooked. His defensive typing is great. He can take on Dark and Rock types very easily. And uh, he's got good defenses, he's got good physical defense, special defense, and he can also withstand he can also heal himself using water attacks, which is great. But his fighting skills are actually, I think, one of the better things about him. Fighting, fighting attacks are just a useful thing to have since they can take out so many Pokemon. What I do with my Poliwraths is usually put the, put the enemy to sleep with the Gnosis and then totally hit him with a Focus Punch. And a 150 base damage fighting move is going to do a lot, especially when it has the same type of attack bonus. So take a look at Poliwrath. He's good at a lot of things. Number four is Aggron. Now, Aggron is a steel rock type which defensively can be good and can be bad. 
Aggron has great physical defense, so much that there's not really any reason to train his physical defense. It's better put in HP, but he also has good attack, which can decimate the underused category. Now, the one I have is named Baguette, because he has a freaking French hat for a, <laughs> for a head, but he's still a very intimidating presence when you uh, use him the right way. Number three is Miss Magius. Now, Miss Magius is uh, a little overshadowed by the other ghost Pokemon. There's other better offensive threats in Gengar, and also uh, better defensive ghost Pokemon in Dusknoir, but it's got good special defense and a little bag of tricks that make it quite useful. I had one when I went through the Elite Four in Generation Four, and it actually saved my ass. All the other Pokemon were knocked out, and I had Miss Magius. Miss Magius took three or four hits, allowing me three or four turns to use items like Revive and uh, and Full Restore on my Pokemon to heal them. So, so that by the time Miss Magius was down, I had three or four Pokemon I could continue fighting the Elite Four. So it was definitely useful in that regard. Number two is Walrein. Now I do not get the Walrein hate. Nobody likes Walrein. Cerebi.net doesn't like Walrein. Smogon doesn't like Walrein. But I think it's a useful Pokemon. It's got pretty good stats, very solid all around, and it's also an ice Pokemon that has access to ice moves, which means that it can take out Dragon Pokemon, which is very useful when you're going through the Elite Four, especially in the third generation. Now, Walrein in that generation for me, I had to use Ice Ball, and since the, the, uh, the Elite Four member had four or five Dragon Pokemon, Ice Ball just kept going and kept going, getting stronger, so it took out its weaker Pokemon first, and by the time its stronger Pokemon were out, it had like 100 base damage or even more, so it can take a good two or three of those Dragon Pokemon out, which is very good. So, very, uh, very, very good Pokemon to have, Walrein. I mean, all Ice Pokemon will have that niche. Ice Pokemon will always be useful. But the number one underrated Pokemon, in my opinion, is actually a very interesting type. It's introduced in the second generation, Jumpluff. It is a flying grass type, which is a very strange type to be, but Jumpluff is one of those Pokemon that's never going to be an offensive threat, but it can definitely annoy the crap out of someone. Now, the way I use my Jumpluff, I pretty much invest everything in its speed to make it a fast Pokemon. That's the only thing really worth noting statistically about Jumpluff, is its fast, very fast speed. So that fast speed allows it to hit a Stun Spore or a Sleep Powder, basically, knocking out one of, the po one of your opponent's Pokemon. And after that, you could talk, toss out a Leech Seed. Now, Leech Seed is always a useful move, but not necessarily for Jump Bluff, because it doesn't have good defenses. But what it can do is put those out and then switch to something else using U-Turn. So, so that Pokemon you send in has got the Leech Seed healing it, and also can, uh, set, can hit a uh, defenseless Pokemon pretty hard as well. You can also use uh, Sunny Day on it in order to uh, set up for the next Pokemon as well. I use that combination with a Typhlosion to uh, very humorous results if you can pull it off the right way. Jumpluff is just a fun Pokemon to use. I think it deserves more credit. So That's my underrated Pokemon. If you have any underrated Pokemon you want to talk about, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be back with more Pokemon Month videos shortly. See you next time.